Picture a desert, an immense expanse of shimmering golden dunes stretching as far as the eye can see, where every drop of water is more valuable than treasure. In this unforgiving environment, a group of Saudi researchers came up with a daring idea to hide salt water deep beneath the sands. It sounded puzzling at first, but it marked the beginning of an extraordinary scientific adventure. Their mission? To discover if the desert could be changed from a place of deprivation into a wellspring of life. They asked themselves, could the relentless heat and endless sand actually help cleanse water? The concept was both straightforward and revolutionary harness the desert as a massive natural filtration system. By placing salt water underground they hoped the Earth's geothermal warmth and the blazing sun would evaporate the water, leaving the salt behind. The resulting vapor would then rise, cool, and condense into fresh water just below the surface. This was a bold test, seeing the desert not as a foe, but as a powerful, untapped ally. These scientists were ready to overturn everything we thought we knew about dry, lifeless lands. Their goal? to reveal the secret abilities of the sand and transform a desolate wasteland into a new source of fresh water. Saudi Arabia is defined by its desert. The Rub al-Khali, the empty quarter, is the largest sand desert on Earth. For centuries, survival here meant mastering the art of finding and conserving water. Today, booming cities demand more water than ever, pushing the limits of traditional sources. Desalination plants now provide much of the country's water, but at a steep environmental and economic cost. These plants consume vast fossil fuels and produce salty waste that threatens marine life. Underground aquifers once relied upon are being depleted faster than they can be replenished. The nation faced a stark reality. Current solutions were unsustainable. Scientists and leaders knew they needed a breakthrough, a way to secure water without draining resources or harming the environment. The idea to bury salt water was born from this urgent need. It wasn't just curiosity, it was a response to a national crisis. Could the desert and the surrounding seas be turned from obstacles into solutions? The experiment was a bold attempt to work with nature, not against it. It was a search for a sustainable answer to the age-old problem of thirst. The stakes couldn't have been higher. The scientists called their idea subsurface agriculture. The plan used the desert as a solar-powered desalination plant. By placing a reservoir of salt water deep in the sand, they hoped the Earth's heat from below and the sun's heat from above would create the perfect environment for evaporation. As the water turned to vapor, it would leave salt behind and rise through the sand. The cooler upper layers would condense the vapor into fresh water just below the surface. This mimicked the planet's natural water cycle, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation all underground. But the vision went further, plant crops directly above the buried reservoir. The condensing water would create a moist layer, nourishing plant roots without wasteful irrigation. If successful, this system could solve two problems at once, water scarcity and food security. Saudi Arabia imports much of its food due to the difficulty of traditional farming. This experiment offered a way to grow crops using abundant salt water and the desert's own resources. It was a vision of green oases powered by a hidden underground engine. The potential was staggering. Turning theory into reality required meticulous planning. The team selected a remote desert site, representative of the harshest conditions. Heavy machinery dug a deep pit, reaching the stable geothermal heat below. They lined the pit with a heavy-duty waterproof liner to contain the salt water. Tanker trucks delivered thousands of gallons of brine, filling the underground basin. Once filled, the pit was carefully buried, restoring the desert surface. Above the hidden reservoir, the scientists planted hardy, salt-tolerant crops like salicornia and special grains. A network of sensors was installed at various depths to monitor temperature, humidity, and soil moisture. The setup was complete. A secret ocean beneath the sand, crops above, and instruments ready to record every change. Now, all they could do was wait and watch. Would the desert cooperate? Would the hidden water rise and bring life to the surface? The experiment had begun. The desert proved to be a formidable partner. Equipment struggled against abrasive sand and relentless heat, forcing the team to work at dawn and dusk. The sand itself was unpredictable. Its density and composition varied, affecting how water vapor moved. In some places vapor rose too slowly, in others it escaped too quickly. The scientists constantly adjusted their models, learning from the desert's surprises. Biological challenges emerged as well. 
Dormant microbes and fungi awoke in the new moisture, sometimes helping, sometimes hindering the crops. Native desert plants, their seeds long buried, began to sprout unexpectedly. The team had to carefully balance nurturing their crops while managing these new arrivals. Progress was slow and often invisible. Days turned to weeks with little change on the surface. Patience became their greatest tool. They resisted the urge to dig up the site, trusting the process and the data from their sensors. The desert demanded respect and perseverance. At last, the first signs of success appeared. Sensors detected a steady rise in soil moisture just below the surface. The process was working, salt water was evaporating, vapor was rising and fresh water was condensing in the sand. Soon, green shoots broke through the surface, salicornia and other hardy plants thriving without irrigation. The sight was astonishing, vibrant life emerging from barren sand, watered by a hidden sea. Rigorous tests confirmed the water in the soil and plants was nearly salt-free. The desert had become a natural distillation column, leaving salt behind and delivering pure water to the crops. The plants didn't just survive, they flourished. The final harvest was a triumph, a bounty of green, in a place where nothing should grow. The experiment had exceeded expectations. The team had turned two of the desert's most abundant resources, salt water and sand, into fresh water and food. The once barren patch was now a symbol of hope. It proved that even the harshest environments could be made to flourish. Ingenuity and respect for nature had unlocked the desert's hidden potential. The impossible had become reality. The success of subsurface agriculture sent ripples through the scientific world. For decades, desert farming meant fighting nature, pumping water, battling evaporation, and relying on costly technology. This experiment flipped the script. It worked with the desert, not against it. The breakthrough was its elegant simplicity. No complex machinery, just a clever use of natural processes. Sun and geothermal heat powered the system. Sand became the filter and condenser. By harnessing nature's own principles, the team created a low-tech, low-energy solution to a high-tech problem. The desert was no longer an obstacle, but a partner. This shift in perspective opened new possibilities for arid regions worldwide. Deserts, once seen as wastelands, could become breadbaskets and anchors against desertification. Each subsurface farm could stabilize soil, prevent erosion and create microclimates for more life. The Saudi scientists had found a way to grow food and perhaps heal the land itself. The rules of desert survival had been rewritten. The implications reach far beyond Saudi Arabia. Imagine this technology in Africa, Australia or the Americas, anywhere salt water is abundant and fresh water is scarce. Coastal communities could grow food sustainably, empowering local economies and reducing dependence on aid. The system is decentralized, allowing small farms to thrive without massive infrastructure. Scientists are now refining the method, optimizing crops, and exploring larger networks of subsurface farms. Integrating solar panels could make these farms truly self-sufficient. This story began with a simple question. What if we buried salt water in the sand? The answer has the potential to reshape our world. The desert, once a symbol of scarcity, is now a landscape of possibility. With ingenuity and respect for nature even the driest places can bloom.